So this is just going to be a bit of a video showing uh, some of the designs and things I've made over the past uh, year and a half or so, uh, learning how to make jewelry and learning how to cut opal. We'll get to that later. Um, yeah, we'll just look at some of the designs. And you're going to have to excuse the bit of tarnishing. I don't know if you can see it well, but these haven't been stored correctly and they've kind of gotten tarnished over the time they've been sitting. Uh, before things sell, I usually just polish them up and then make them look new again. But that one was supposed to be just like some cat ears, you know, something like that. That was a pretty early design. These, this is a kind of beaded thing that was too delicate, so I had to add two small rings on the middle so it doesn't bend. Uh, here's one that was kind of just a test of skills. Uh, these are mostly separate pieces, so like that outer square is a separate piece, inner square is a separate piece, this is a separate piece. So it was a lot of soldering and it came out like really nicely. I'm actually really surprised with that one. Uh, and yeah, these mostly on the left are earlier creations I made. So here's just a bit of a ring, a uh, chain link ring type thing. It's kind of cool, but it's hard. You can't get it flat because one of them will be will be off always. One of the links will be going the wrong way. And I didn't realize that when I was making it. Here's just a braided ring. Pretty, pretty heavy. It's like a thumb, thumb ring. And then here's another, where is it? Uh, I had a thinner braided ring. See, this is, this is a bit thinner, but it's not the small one I was looking for. Oh, there it is. See, this is just a thin braided ring, sort of flattened. That one's, that one's pretty cool. It's like a little pinky ring. And then I just did some setting CZs, cubic zirconia into just simple bands, just for practice. Uh, this was a really early design that I really like. It's just like a flower on, on, a, on a band. And then here's another design. Again, the flower, but this one turns. Yeah, it's pretty all right. Uh, and then I bought some opals, so here's one of the first opals I bought, and like, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I bought, probably overpaid for these, like, but there's an opal ring, here's another design with an opal, there's not a lot of color in these, but they were, they were pretty cheap. This one actually was purchased and returned by somebody and they had like pulled it apart and put the opal the wrong way. I don't know. Here's another opal. This one's really nice under the light, but pretty much colorless if it's not kin light. But the beaded accent is kind of flattened because I I flat or uh, I ground down the sides here, and yeah, the beaded accent got a little bit flattened, so it doesn't look perfect. But I mean, it's okay. Um, 
Just a moonstone ring. I like the I like that disco ball type thing. I think that's really nice. Uh, here's a ring of rings. That's pretty cool. And then here is another sort of test. Uh, I'd never set anything like this before. And it's just like trying to perfect the soldering and and stuff like that. But that was a really early make actually. Oh, what size is it? This one's like a six or something. I think it's kind of cool, but you know, it's a little bit pointy. <laughs> uh, simple, twisted, run of the mill. This uses three three strands instead of just two, because two you get this this effect right here, three you get that effect. Um, and then I started making, well, yeah, I started making some earrings and I found a way to make little balls and drill holes in them. And I ended up making something like that. That's like a really nice style, I think but it's a little bit tarnished and that was the first one I made so it was a little bit rough like the details are not perfect but these are these two oh sh but when they get polished up they're they're nice but when I'm polishing these this thing, it'll get stuck in here and it'll rip it. It'll just, I don't know. It's just really, really hard to polish them properly. And then again, I did the little ball thing, but these are really simple. I think I listed these for like $15 or something. Just cause they're, I don't know, easier to make and kind of nice. And here's some opal stuff. I bought I bought these opals. These are solid Cooper PDs. And I made a lot of earrings with those. And yeah, all of those earrings I think sold except for one pair. And then here's an opal that I cut. Um, and set I've gotten a lot better at it at this point bezel setting is not the easiest thing to do oh here's an opal from uh, I got from Seda on Black Friday deals from like a I think it was a $38 parcel and well I mean this stone is pretty nice this light doesn't do very well but it's got a pit right there there's a yeah and I set it in double double round band uh, here's one that I cut as well just on a square square band not a lot of flash but that's what you get from cheap auction parcels from opal auctions not not the best uh, here's sort of experimental thing it it worked out but there's really not a lot of flash in this but Kind of nice for what it is. Uh, unique, yeah. yeah. And then this is when I started setting like oddly shaped opal because I, I cut this one and it, it actually cracked there. See that's that's the risk with the oddly shaped opal. They crack pretty easy if you're not super careful with them. This one has a little bit of flash but it's mostly just green dots, green and blue dots. Um, and then, 
there's this, which I, I really like this. This is pretty cool. Uh, it's a piece of Anamuka opal, crystal opal, that uh, had sand inside there, so I replaced it with uh, epoxy, which is really noticeable now, which is kind of bad, but it looks like a tooth, and that's kind of what I was going for. And it's just a little pendant type thing. Uh, what else do we have here? Here's some doublets that I bought that I, again, probably overpaid for in the, the opal. See, they're, they're kind of flashy. Anyways. Yeah, just some stud earrings. And I kind of latched on to that idea and just started making a lot of stud earrings. So here's a pair of amethyst. I made a pair in, uh, with garnet, the same size stone, same style, those sold. And I made a pair with peridot, the green stone. Um, those sold as well. Um, here's something that I probably wasted a bunch of opal on. It's like a, a triplet, <laughs> a really large triplet. But this stuff was sort of junk, like the middle one is okay, but the other stuff is a little bit not great. Uh, here's some actually good triplets set in silver, just, just as earrings. I think I got a really good deal on these. I got them for like $8 in an auction, no, no reserve auction. And like, these are pretty good, like, uh, the setting is just amazing, like, sometimes I get lucky, I think, and I just set it really well. Um, I think those are just earrings. Uh, and then somebody contacted me and asked if I was interested in Ethiopian opal, and here's some of that, that's... This one I cut from rough, and amazingly, it didn't crack while drying. This one's so nice though. And it's just unfortunate that I, I slipped when I was setting it. Uh, when I was pushing this here, uh, my bezel pusher slipped in and it cracked the middle of the stone there. But this one is, just amazing. Like the the video doesn't really do it justice. Um, here's another one of those Ethiopian opals. This one's really big and pretty flashy. Um, didn't crack while it was drying. I dried it really quick, so that's a little bit surprising. And then here's some stud earrings, just in the shape of like an eye or like a you know, something that'll fit your fit your earlobe. These two are really flashy. Like, yeah, it's amazing the color you can get for how cheap Ethiopian opal is. But you know, there's a reason for that. It's because you have to explain to every customer that you shouldn't get it wet and that it can crack if it dries out too fast. And then here's another design. These are just, I just wanted to mess around with threading. And my, uh, my partner said that it might be a bit dangerous because these don't have a way of like falling off of your ear if something tugs on it or pulls on it. So it'd just be like, it would rip off your ear or something. So it's a bit dangerous, but Let's see if I can get that back. Yeah, and it, it goes on pretty easy. Like, look at that. And they're pretty stylish, you know? I would wear those. Maybe not. 
if I had pierced ears. I don't think so. <laughs> here's an earlier design. And here's an older logo stamp. And these took a while to make. These took a long time to make and I don't I don't think they're the best design, but I think twenty dollars is a pretty good deal. Here's something with a bit of uh, opal. You got the gold filled uh, twisted exterior. Somebody said it looks kind of like a flower and then the opal center, which is really nice. I like that. Um, I think these are some studs again, or the opal doublets. And these ones I'm pretty proud of. I like this design. I'm kind of surprised they haven't sold yet. Um, yeah. And then here's some of the opal I've cut. Like uh, number one is, or one to three are doublets. I've been told that, that this is someone's favorite. Even though, I think this one, I really like this one, but some of these are pretty flashy, like number 11. Number 11 has some really nice flash. Well, depending on how you look at it. Number eight's really large, but just a light pin fire. Number four is like a prism. It's got a little bit of flash. Six and seven are Ethiopian. Number six is way more flashy than seven. These are supposed to be a matching pair, but number six is just too bright for to set them both as like a pair of earrings. And number nine is actually kind of nice under the right light, but I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, it's got the rolling, rolling flashes, I think what they call it. And yeah, that's about it.